Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about a recent bill that has been passed by the Rajya Sabha and it has been passed earlier by the Lok Sabha. So we can say the overall parliament has finally passed this bill. This bill is Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2022. Now in this particular bill, there are two controversial amendments or changes that has been made. One change is with related to the elephants and other changes are with related to the vermin animal. So in this video, we are going to discuss the details. What are these controversial amendments? What is the criticism of this amendment? And what is the overall rationale behind introducing such amendment in the bill? But before going into detail, let us try to first understand the context of this particular issue. So as we discussed, Raj Sabha on Thursday, that means yesterday, has passed finally the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2022. And due to the passage of this bill, it has invited scrutiny on two major issues. One is the exemptions that has been provided to allow the transfer of captive elements. And second is with regards to the sweeping powers that has, been, that has been given to the central government as far as the declaration of any animal species as vermin is concerned. The Lok Sabha already had cleared this particular bill in the August when the monsoon season was ongoing. So let us try to understand this in more detail. But before going into detail, let us first understand what is Wildlife Protection Act. So in simple term, Wildlife Protection Act can be defined as a legal framework that has been made by the government of India or we can say parliament of India for the protection of various species of wild animals as well as plants, the management of their habitat and the regulation and control of trade in the wild animals, plants and products that is made from them. So this is in essence is overall objective of the Wildlife Protection Act. Now, under the original Wildlife Protection Act of year 1972, the animal species and the plant species has been put into different different categories, which are called as schedules. So, first of all, we talk about Schedule 1 and uh, Part 2 of the Schedule 2. These are basically uh, in these basically include such animals which are in the category of endangered species. And if any animal species included in these two categories, they are given absolute protection from the hunting. The example of such species is tiger, which is a part of this particular category. Then the next category is schedule 3 and 4, where the animals included in the schedules are also roughly given same protection as in section 1 and 2, but it also cover animals that are not in danger of becoming extinct. So again, while the first category include endangered animals only, endangered species only, second category can also include animals which are not endangered. Then we have the next category, which is called as schedule 5. In this particular category, it delineates such animals that can be hunted, the animals such as ducks and as well as the deers with the prior permission of the chief wildlife warden. And then last we have schedule 6 where the it concerns with the cultivation and plant life and give teeth to setting up more protected animal parks across different different parts of the India. So that is overall view, broad view about the Wildlife Protection Act. Now let us try to understand what are the major amendments that has been uh, that has been introduced in this particular bill in this particular year. So the first major amendment is that a new schedule for specimens that are listed in the sites appendixes have also been included. The sites basically is an international agreement that basically includes all three kind of animals, whether the animals are living over land, whether the animals are living over water, or even avian species such as those who are flying over, flying in the atmosphere. So a special schedule for those animals will also be. Uh, be will become part of the uh, Wildlife Protection Act. The second amendment is that there has been a provision made for establishment of a standing committee that will exercise such powers and duties as may be delegated to this committee by the state board for the wildlife. Then the third provision is the amendment has been done in section 43 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and by this amendment now government has permitted that any elephant which is basically a schedule one animal can be used for religious or any other purposes. Then the next amendment is the section 49E, the new schedule a section has been introduced where it empowers the central government to designate a management authority to grant export or import permits for the trade of these specimens, whether it can be plant specimens or it can be the animal species. Then the next is that the bill also empowers both central and state government to declare area that is adjacent to the national parks and sanctuary as a conservation reserve in a bid to basically protect the habitat of the plant as well as animal species around the area where it actually uh, resides or area actually uh, where actually it grows. And the last major provision 
is that it also empowers central government to regulate and stop the import, trade or possession of invasive plant or animal alien species. Now invasive animal species, invasive or alien species basically refer to such species which are not endemic to geographical region of India but has come or can come from different parts of the world and basically they are invasive in nature. That means if such alien species come in the India's uh, geographical region, since they will not have any kind of competition, they will not have any predator which can prey upon them, they will not have any kind of competition with the local plants, so they will grow at a very rapid and fast rate. And if they are growing and breeding at a very rapid and fast rate, there is a real threat that the original inhabitants or original species of India can actually become threatened and even can become endangered and later on extinct. The best example we can see from the case of Australia, where the original natural vegetation of Australia has been completely wiped out by the invasive alien species plant that is eucalyptus plant. So eucalyptus has covered today a large area of Australia, while the original plant has been relegated to a very small region. In case of India also, one such example you can take is the Lantana camera that is a very invasive, a very uh, fast and rapid growing plant developing in the watery areas in the aquatic habitats and wherever it grows it also basically causes wiping out of the original plants of that particular region. So that is all about the invasive alien species. Now the main question that we have discussed today in this video is what is the controversy surrounding the elephant or the elephant question. So before that let us try to understand a brief background of the status of elephant in the, in the Wildlife Protection Act. So before Wildlife Protection Act was enacted in year 1972, animals uh, such as elephants were governed by the Indian Forest Act, which was basically an act that has been uh, enacted by the British government in year 1927. So as far as the Indian Forest Act is concerned, British government had declared elephant as a kind of animal belonging to the cattle category. However, when the Wildlife Protection Act in, was enacted in 1972, elephant along with other animals such as bullock, camel, donkey, horse and mule were categorized as a vehicle animal. Vehicle animal means these animals can, without attracting any kind of penalty or imprisonment, can be used by people for as a vehicle for transportation of different goods. Then later on the elephant, huh, also we can understand that elephant is the only animal which is though included in the schedule on a wildlife protection act. However, it is still can be owned legally by means of inheritance or the gift. Later on, a new section was added in Wildlife Protection Act that is called as Section 43. And as per this section, the government prohibited the trade in all captive wildlife and any non-commercial transfer across state boundaries without the permission of the respective chief wildlife, ward wildlife warden. Now, the main question that comes to us is that in the last year also, government tried to introduce amendment in Wildlife Protection Act where it made that there will be an exception to section 43 that we have just discussed. And as per this exception, this section shall not apply to the transfer or transport of any live elephant by a person who is having a certificate of ownership of that particular elephant. And also where such person has obtained the prior permission from the state government on fulfillment of such conditions as may be prescribed by the central government. That means for the animals, uh, for the elephants, exception was made in the section 43. However, this particular exception attracted a lot of criticism from various different wildlife organizations, NGOs, as well as even the former Environment Minister of India uh, during the UPA regime, Mr. J. Ram Ramesh. And he and other uh, stakeholders objected to this blanket exemptions and they said that such kind of exemption will attract a lot of trade and illegal trade in the elephants, as well as it also cause torture to the elephants and problems for the elephants. That is why they recommended that the limit or this exception should apply only for those elephants which are temple elephants which are kept for the religious purposes only. So when such strong criticism was attracted, was basically uh, government attracted such a strong criticism, they finally amended the bill and tried to water it down. And thus in the new bill, they have modified this particular exemption and now they have included this wording that only the exception will apply where the transfer or transport of a captive elephant is being, uh, elephant is being done for a religious. However, another clause that has been added is or any other purpose by a person, again having a valid certificate of ownership, shall be subject to such terms and conditions as may be prescribed by the central government. So now you can see that though it seems that provision has been changed, some modification has been made, but overall again the original uh, spirit of the last amendment has been maintained here because this blanket clause, any other purposes has been included here. 
and that is why again this provision has attracted a lot of criticism from the same stakeholder we had where they have said and rightly said that sweeping ambit of any other purpose clause will basically empower elephant traders put wild populations at a greater risk of capture and obviously the defeat defeat the very purpose with which wildlife protection act has been enacted so that is all about the elephant question the second issue is with regards to the vermin now question comes that what is vermin first so vermin though it has not been defined clearly by the wildlife protection act but by our own understanding and the decisions of the governments as well as the judgments of the courts we can say that such animals which are considered as a problematic animal which can create nuisance because they are threatening to the humans life of humans crops livestock or property can be categorized as a vermin animals now vermin animals have been included in the schedule 5 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 where the few species of animals such as fruit bats common crows and rats are included as vermin permanently however under section 62 of wildlife protection act the power also has been given to the central government where central government if there are sufficient reason can categorize any species obviously exceptions are there those species which are accorded the highest legal protection cannot be declared as vermin but except those all other animal species if there are sufficient reason can be declared a vermin for a certain place for example if any animal is declared vermin for haryana it does not mean that you can kill that particular animal in the uttar pradesh so so the declaration of vermin is applied or applicable over a certain place and also for a certain time so there is temporal limit as well as the spatial limit apart from that state governments also have been given power under section 11 of the wildlife protection act where the chief wildlife warden of any state can allow killing of an animal irrespective of its status now this is very very important clause it does not matter whether the animal species belong to schedule 1 or schedule 2 or to schedule uh, schedule 5 any animal species irrespective of status can be allowed to be killed by chief wildlife warden or uh, chief wildlife warden if the animal has become dangerous to the human life so these are the two major provisions of wildlife protection act that deals basically with the vermin however there has been certain issues so what are these certain issues if you look at the wildlife protection act the amendment that has been done in year 1991 under this particular amendment the power uh, to the central government was very much increased and now the central government has been handed over the power to restrict the possibility of eliminating a large number of animals at species level as vermin well. I mean, and that is why rather than state government now it is central government that decides that which animals should be declared as a vermin In simple terms, after 1991 amendment, the power of state government to declare animals as vermin has been snatched away and has been handed over to the central government. And it is due to these changes. In the recent year, we have seen many instances where the central government has declared many animal species as vermin at even state levels, often without any credible scientific assessment. This is the most strong criticism. Uh, against this decision of the central government to decide animals uh, or to declare animals as a vermin because they are declaring animals as vermin without any credible scientific assessment to give you two recent examples it was in year 2015 the neel gaya was declared as vermin animal in the state of bihar and in the next following year rhesus macaque the species of monkey was declared as a vermin animal in the state of Mahar, state of uh, himachal pradesh by the central government so the conflict has arose and we can say a kind of controversy has arose where it is seen that this uh, this mandate of the central government this uh, power of the central government to declare animal as vermin even at the state level has given rise to center state politics and how it has given rise to center state politics we can understand that in recent times kerala has been continuously uh, applying uh, to the central government that wild boars should be declared as a vermin because they are causing loss of uh, crop and loss of agricultural harvest to a large number of people in large area of kerala however center has turned down this request and has said that it will not declare wild boar as a vermin in the state of kerala so overall what we can see that wherever we have the uh, opposition party government that is uh, uh, different from the central government we can see such kind of center state tussle in the uh, declaration of vermin as well and that is the controversy has arose where some state want animal to declared more uh, freely Uh, as vermin well, while some stakeholder some member of parliaments and legislator want the provision or the power of central government to be diluted as far as the power of declaring animal as a vermin is concerned so that is the two major issues that is 
associated with this particular amendment bill that has been passed by both the houses of this parliament. So we'll have to wait, watch and see that what is the outcome of this particular amendment and how the central state government or central state relations are affected due to this particular bill. So that is all for this particular issue. I hope you understood the overall concept behind this wildlife uh, protection amendment bill 2022. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your fellow aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. Thank you very much.